All right, so in this video, we'll be looking at a linear programming example. Okay, so first of all, we need to read the information. This is very important. And I like to write down what I know as I go along. So a dog breeder has X Dobermans and Y Bulldogs. The breeder has seven or fewer Dobermans and no more than eight Bulldogs. She has enough, sorry, enough is spelled, is spelled. She has enough room in her kennels for not more than 10 dogs in total at a time. Okay, question A, express the three conditions above as inequalities. Right, so first thing, Dobermans are X and Bulldogs are Y. So let's write that down. So Dobermans, Dobermans, so that'll be our X's, and Bulldogs, that'll be our Y's. Uh, y. Alright, so I'm just going to draw a little grid. I find that sometimes helps me. Okay, now the first thing we see is the breeder has seven or fewer Dobermans. So the number of Dobermans, number of Dobermans is less than or equal to seven, right? Seven or fewer Dobermans and no more than eight bulldogs. So the number of bulldogs is less than or equal to eight, right? Eight or fewer bulldogs. Or no more than eight bulldogs. Now she has enough room in her kennels I'm just gonna make that H there. I don't like misspelling. Enough room in her kennels for not more than ten dogs in total at a time. So the total number of dogs will be Dobermans plus bulldogs, right? So we've got Dobermans plus bulldogs must be less than or equal to 10. Right, the total number of all of these must be no more than 10. Right, so there we have our inequalities. Okay, then we get to number B. Using one centimeter equals two dogs in the x-axis. Uh, let's call this the x-axis here. Yeah. I'll draw that in another color just now. One centimeter is two dogs in the x, and two centimeters equals one dog on the y. Draw the three inequalities on the axes. Okay, uh, let's quickly just give them the names X and Y. So this is Y and this is X. All right, so uh, uh, let's just scroll down a little bit. No, that's actually fine there. We want to use this thing. So the grid. I'm going to say each of these grid lines, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, each one of these grid lines will represent one centimeter and that's about accurate. So one centimeter equals two dogs in the x-axis. So one centimeter is two dogs. So that'll be a that'll be a two right there. So that's two. Another one centimeter is another two dogs. Six, eight, ten. It's a little bit cramped. But we get the idea. And let me just do maybe two more. 12, 14. All right, and on the y axis, the other way around. Two centimeters is one dog. So there we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten right at the top. Okay, uh, let me do that ten slightly better. Ten. All right, now we have to draw our inequalities on that grid. So the first one, uh, let's do that here. So to find the inequalities, I found the intercept method is the best. So the first one, x less than or equal to 7. We can replace the less than sign with an equal sign. So x equals 7. Boom, that's it. So there we go, right between the 6 and the 8. Right there. All right, so we want to draw that one. And for that, I'm going to use this tool just to be able to draw a straight line. So from there, all the way up. Okay, that's about right. So that's x equals 7. And we want to do the less than. We'll get to that just now with number C. Then, the next one is y equals 8. So y equals 8. Okay, so that is right there. So let's do the straight line tool again. So from 8, we're going to draw a straight line that way. Okay. And then we get to the last one, x plus y equals 10. So to find the x-intercept, we make y 0, 
So x plus 0 equals 10, and that means x equals 10. Okay, so when x equals 10, right there, and we also do the y-intercept, so that's when x is 0. So 0 plus y equals 10, and that means y equals 10. So that'll be right up here. That's where y equals 10. And let's connect those two points for our other straight line. Right there. All right, so there we've drawn our inequalities. Now, in question C, now we have to shade the wanted and unwanted regions. So the question says, shade the unwanted regions, which do not satisfy the inequalities, and therefore we'll be leaving the region which does satisfy the inequalities unshaded. Okay, so we want to shade the unwanted regions. Okay, let me get sort of a highlighter tool. I think that might work for the unwanted. Oh, actually, pencil should be fine for now. Okay, so now let's do a highlighter. I want to see how that works. Okay, so the highlighter, unwanted regions. Let's start with the first one. X must be less than 7. So here we go. That's the X equals 7 line. So we, it must be less than, so we want to shade the greater than part. We want to shade the greater than part. Right? So that part here is what we, don't, we want to get rid of. Everything to the right here. Okay. I know it doesn't look very flattering. It's not a great, maybe it's not the best tool. But that's fine. So we shaded everything to the right of our line. Okay. Next, we look at A must be less, Y must be less than or equal to 8. So everything above that line we want to shade. Right? Everything above Y equals 8. We want to shade. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to shade this last little open part here as well. All right. And finally, we get to y plus x, or x plus y must be less than or equal to 10. So we want to shade everything that's greater than this line. It's so everything above the line we want to shade. So that's the part we want to shade, everything above the line. Okay. So we're leaving this part is now our region that we want, the unshaded region. So that is question C. Uh, question D. State the maximum number of Dobermans and Bulldogs the breeder can have at any given time. Right? The maximum number of Dobermans and Bulldogs. Okay. So to find that, we need to look for any value sort of that's on the edge here. On the edge here. That will give us a maximum. So one option is he could have eight bulldogs and zero Dobermans. If we move slightly here, he could have eight bu bulldogs and one, I mean eight bulldogs and two Dobermans. Right, so that is one option. Uh, let me just zoom out a little bit so we can keep everything on the screen. Okay, so one option we said is he could have uh, Let's do the x, y, x and y coordinates, x first. So he could have, oh man, sorry. I need to get rid of the straight line tool. So he could have two Dobermans and eight Bulldogs. So two and eight. And that gives us a total of 10 dogs, right? Another option would be, where's the next one here? Would be like three and seven, right, over there. So you could have three, whoa, three Dobermans and seven Bulldogs. That's also ten. And we go a little bit further. So you're right here, four and six. You could have four Dobermans and six Bulldogs. That's also ten. So we see a pattern here. So it's going to be ten. But let's just continue for completeness sake. Uh, five and five, yep, that point there, five and five. You could have 5 and 5, which is also 10 dogs. You could have uh, 6 and 4. Yep, that's part of the inside. So that'll be 6 Dobermans and 4 Bulldogs. Also 10 dogs. Uh, 7 and 3 will also work. And that is also 10. And oh, we can't go to 8. 8 is outside. So these are all the options for the maximum, and that is... 10 dogs. So our answer is obviously 10. It's the maximum. And the last question 
is the breeder sells the bulldogs for two and a half thousand per dog and the dobermans for three and a half thousand per dog calculate the maximum profit the breeder can make so we're assuming all of this is profit two and a half thousand profit and three and a half thousand profit so to find the maximum profit we again we have to look at the vertices so we can choose we can choose this point here we can choose that point there we can choose that point there that one or yeah, this one won't really count so those will be our options and I'm pretty sure it's going to be one of these two so let's just try those two but you can try all four okay so this point here what is that point that is seven and yeah, that's three and a half so that doesn't count so seven and three that's one that would work so well, let's first do this let's first write the profit equation so profit equals uh, Doberman's X so three and a half thousand X three thousand five hundred X plus the price for each bulldog two and a half thousand Y okay now our options that we could try is firstly we could try this this value this value here that one there because this one is we can't have half a dog right and that's half a dog so that doesn't count three seven and three so first option seven and three and the other option we can try is this one here that is two and eight two and eight so option two two and eight so let's see how that works so option one we have a profit equals three thousand five hundred times seven plus two thousand five hundred times three and that'll equal well, three and a half thousand times seven what is that twenty four thousand five hundred plus seven thousand five hundred that gives us thirty two thousand Namibian dollars and option two let's see how that works profit equals three and a half thousand times the x value which is two plus two and a half thousand times the y value which is eight and that gives us seven thousand plus uh, two and a half thousand times eight is twenty thousand so that gives us Namibian dollars twenty seven thousand so the maximum profit is this one there we go so we see for for linear inequalities for linear programming we just need to be able this is this I found this part question a that's usually the part where people struggle the most just to get the right inequalities but we saw it's actually quite straightforward right all we do is just plug the information in that they give us uh, seven or fewer Dobermans so X must be fewer or equal to seven uh, no more than eight Bulldogs so eight so Bulldogs must be not more than eight so it must be eight or eight or less and the total dogs must be less than or equal to 10 so x plus y less than or equal to 10 I found this once you get this the rest is easy because you know how to draw straight lines and then shading that's also fine if you're unsure about the shading what you can do is just test a number on each side of the line and see if it holds for your inequality let's do one example of that before we finish so let's say for this one x plus y less than 10 so here's our line for x plus y is less than 10 uh, let's choose one number let's say let one value right there what is that value that value is 10 and 4 right so 10 and 4 and let's choose one number this side of the line so that value is 4 and 2 4 and 2 and let's see what happens when we test them all right uh, so x plus y must be less than 10 so x plus y less than or equal to 10 our one option was 4 was 4 and 2 the other one was 10 and 4 so 4 and 2 or 10 and 4 so let's try 4 and 2 so 4 plus 2 that is indeed less than or equal to 10 because it's 6 and 6 is less than or equal to 10 so that's right so the left so that seems like the one that works and the one on the other side 10 plus y must be less than or equal to 10 uh, 10 plus 4 sorry 
So 14, that is not less than or equal to 10. So that's wrong. So we see here the 4, 2, 1, this one works. So that is the side we do want. So that's something you can choose if you're unsure about which side of the line is the correct side. And please let me know if you have any other questions on linear programming. I'll link a really old video that I did that also does a linear programming example.